All right, so short loin. I'm going to start on the on by the backbone and go this way with it. I'm going to take off the um, tenderloin first. I know that when I get close to there, there's like a little piece of bone that comes out. It's right in that area there. Okay. I normally would probably have this turned a little differently for me, but I want it to show up on the camera for you guys. Okay. So again, I'm just trying to follow the bone. Oh, there's that, there's that little kind of knuckle that sticks out. I'm, my knife blade is aiming towards the bone. My thought is I need to get the bone off of this meat as opposed to the meat off the bone, right? Now I'm trying to get flat here with the bone, those, um, and it's almost pulling off now. There we go. Okay. A little chunky, a little snap. All right, so that's the tenderloin, off. And I'll clean that up. All right. What are these weigh? 20 something? So, I know there's silver skin here. You can see it. I feel like it's yeah, it feels like it easy. Yeah, that's really fun. So, I'm just taking off a little fat. Try not to take meat off. I'm going to then take this little bit of silver skin so I have a good shot. I know where I'm going, though. It's here. Here's the bone. And they get smaller down here. So this is the rear end, right? And then this is where the ribs get big, over here, okay? Pretty sure. Okay. And I think I said to you guys last week with the lamb that even the guy that uh, we visited in, in Maine, they were talking about he likes to do whole animals, but the only thing he'll do lamb, and he goes, but he has a really hard time selling all the beef pieces and parts, right? So, and this takes time, right? So it's gotta be something that the chef has the time to do, because this usually is gonna be your, one of your most expensive employees doing this. This isn't something you just say, hey, Newbie, go break down a, a, a leg of lamb. And I'm trying to find the bone down here. nice and cold keep your fingers away from the meat uh, the knife right I mentioned that last time with the lamb because when I have had it happen I haven't even felt it sometimes the fingers are so cold okay all right so you can see all right what's going on there we should look at new mats these I think have finally died Yeah, so even if we just start slowly yeah. 
mark them with a permanent marker and slowly get rid of them. Rotate them out. They're three years old. Like. They're more than that, some of them. No, we came down here with the shelf liners. Uh, okay. But they're, they're well, this is our fourth year, by the way. Okay, I feel the bone. I'm following the bone. There it is. So now this is almost a one by one. The one by one would be, yeah, that's about a one by one. So write that note down, one by one, you wanna know what a one by one is, okay? This is about a one by one. It's got a big chunk here. This way, morning May, let's go. Move like you mean it. Um, so up here this way then would become the prime rib, rear body. Okay. Uh, how many? So then, in here, if I was prepping this at my restaurant back in the day, I do what's called an entrecot. So I would come through here, and I take about half of the silver skin off. In the states, a lot of people keep all this on. I'm not a fan of it. The other thing, by keeping this on, think about that silver skin there. What do we know about silver skin? It's tough, right? It needs to cook low and slow. So no matter what I do, that's gonna be chewy. So if I leave that on there and the customer puts it in the mouth, like, oh, my steak is tough. Okay? So I wanna get this silver skin off. So I take and if you order like a New York strip steak or whatever, um, they usually keep most of this on. Sometimes they'll trim it down to a quarter inch of fat and leave most of the silver skin this way. So like a big Y, right? The, the, most of the butcher shops keep this on. They just get it so it's thin. But that silver skin is still something that's gonna be tough. There's no way around it. And, you know, I just cut my nails, so it's hard, but you're going to pull this away from me, basically, to keep it tight so that I can kind of slide my knife underneath it. Okay, and then I'm going to take, I don't like this part here, so I take this off. It comes off at the table anyway, so why send it out to the customer? When we used to do these steaks at the restaurant, they were 10 ounces trimmed. So that means I probably was using 14 plus ounces of meat before I trimmed it. Okay. I would trim them because uh, even if I ordered them, there wasn't a place around back then that would do them exactly how I wanted. So I would have this off. I just want to show you what this would look like. This is not the boning knife I normally use. I forgot to grab mine from upstairs. Um, I might take that off. There's a little silver skin. I'll take that off. I'm going to come back. So you see how big this is? I want to be here. So I'm gonna stop there, I'm gonna look and say, okay, I like the thickness of that fat, I'm okay with that. I usually don't leave more than about an inch here. So I would start with this, like that. 
okay. So I'm okay so far there. I'm gonna check the bottom. And I'm gonna make sure there's no silver skin connective tissue there. So I'll take this off. There we go. So that's a, gonna be a beautiful steak. And it's pretty much what uh, in France they call entrecote. E-N-T-R-E-C-O-T-E. E-N-T-R-E, entrecote, C-O-T-E. We would call it a New York strip, but they usually aren't trimmed as much in the United States. Okay? So just to give you an idea, I probably should have cut one and then trimmed it. I don't know. I haven't cut a 10-ounce steak in a while. Let's see what that looks like. 11 and a half. All right. And actually, I'd probably be there. 11 ounces. So that's an 11 ounce entrecote. Okay. Look at that beautiful steak. Isn't that nice? This is this is actually pretty good shape. Is this from our house? Choice? Oh, it looks good though. Yeah. All right. So that's a nice entrecote. Okay. All right. 